Hey guys, it's Trevor here again, and we're uh, thank you again for joining us for Let's Talk Google Apps. Today we're going to talk about Google Slides. Now everyone's familiar with PowerPoint. Everyone's familiar with what it's like to load up images onto PowerPoint and then end up with huge file sizes that you can't email or do anything else with. So what we're going to try and do today is show you how uh, Google Slides actually gives you some alternatives to doing that. Um, I'm going to have my uh, colleagues here, if they would introduce themselves. Again, we'll just start with you, John, please. Oh, forgot to mute myself. I'm John Colson from the Department of Computer Science in Grant McEwen University, and I teach a course on educational technology, which I try to use Google Apps as much as possible. All right, and I'm uh, Terry Cordy from Edmonton Public Schools. Uh, I work with a group of other teacher consultants who go out and work with staff to uh, our teachers in our school district to help them uh, better use Google Apps with their students. So we have all of our staff have been on Google Apps for a couple of years now at least, and all of our 90,000 plus students have accounts. So that's why I kind of was excited about this opportunity to chat with uh, John and Trevor and the staff at the at Grand McEwen about uh, preparing, helping prepare our next future teachers. And, uh, you know, I've, I've uh, talked to quite a few uh, instructors and, and stuff from Edmonton Public School Board, and, and those guys have some really cool ideas of, of how they're making use of the Google Apps stuff. So we'll be learning lots from you guys, that's for sure. So I want to start off, I'm going to do a quick screen share here, and we're going to talk about Google Slides. We're not going to do too much about how to put a, a picture in, how to do text and stuff like that, because quite frankly, if you can do it in PowerPoint, you can do it in Google Slides. But the question that's going to come up is, you know, why should we switch to Google Slides if PowerPoint works for us? Can you guys see my screen okay now? Oh, that sums up, okay. All right then. So. Google Slides, your presentation is always up to date. And we'll talk, I'll tell you why in a, in a couple seconds. First of all, Google Slides is stored in the cloud. So there is no files that actually get shifted from one location to another. When you update it, you update that one file in the cloud. You don't have to update your local uh, file like PowerPoint, then send an email to someone to make sure that they can get access to it. It's easy to share the Google Slide itself, whether it's for collaboration or just for people to view it. The collaboration is, doesn't mean just someone can view it. Collaboration means that people can work on it together. So again, you can have up to 50 people accessing this one document and each of us working on our own separate slide for a, a presentation at the exact same time. There's desktop and mobile versions of the uh, application that allow you to, to view it and do some editing. And as I mentioned before, it's an easy tr transition from Microsoft Office. Some of the other advantages is it's easy to convert to PowerPoint, so if you, or convert from PowerPoint. So if you already have them built, there's you can just drag them into your uh, Google Drive, open it as a Google slide, and it will convert it automatically. It does a pretty good job of conversion. Some of the animations may not come through when you've got those fancy animations built in Google Slides. But keep in mind that when you're doing a presentation, people are there to listen to you. Your slides are actually your backup just as the points are there on the screen as I'm talking about them, you're actually here to listen to me and talk about what it is um, or talk about the subject. One of the things that I really like about Google Sides is graphics are downsized. I've seen people in the past that will take their pictures from a number of different uh, locations. They will then upload them to Google Slide and the file size now becomes huge because they have not downsized the graphics. And then when you get a, gra or a, a PowerPoint slide that's 20 or 30 megs in size and you try to email it, a lot of email clients say, you know what, we only do six megs uh, file size. We can't do anything bigger than that. So now you have to find some other way to get that uh, file, PowerPoint file, to somebody else. The graphics are automatically downsized to whatever it needs. And because you're viewing it as a file directly off the web, it's already taken into account all the sizing that it needs to do to display it properly. Last minute changes are done directly on the file itself, so you don't have to email anything. And I'll demonstrate that in a second, because that's really cool. Publish to the web. Once I'm uh, finished this graphic, I can or this slide, I can give you a link to this exact slide that's published to the web, so that you can view it, you can download it as a PDF, you can make a copy of it yourself. I don't have to go and do that second step where I have to find some place to house it in order to give it access to other people. And finally, I can save it as multiple formats. Even though 
I have a copy of this and even though most places that I go to when I present do have internet and this is dependent on internet if the internet breaks out I want to make sure that I have a backup copy so I often will save this as a PowerPoint presentation as well as a PDF because every computer can can uh, display PDFs collaboration is really great with a collaboration I can do as I'm working on a, a, a slide deck or a presentation I can send that to somebody else to do to review it they can add comments just like you would do in a Microsoft Office document we can have multiple editors which means there's more than one of us building this thing and making it work the changes are immediate so whenever I make a change anyone else that's sharing this document will also be able to see that and automatic versioning happens as you're working on the file so if you happen to delete a slide and you decide you know a month later boy I sure wish I had that slide from uh, a month ago I can easily go in find it make a copy of it and bring it into this presentation oh we don't need to see that because I can't play video on here so I'm gonna just stop this so that's pretty much it, uh, much it in a nutshell. What I'm going to do now is I want to share with you a Google slide and one of the advantages I was talking about earlier. Uh, because uh, the slide is, is shared in the cloud, John and I are actually going to have access to this slide at the same time. Now I've taken other documents that have uh, done stuff with people and they've come in and they've gone in and uh, were able to edit in live time as a group. So quite often I, I hear teachers, what they'll do is they'll say to their students, here's a slide deck or, or Google slide uh, document. I'll give everyone access to it. All of you are going to present uh, at, by the end of the week. So everyone create a slide and do your comments and create your documents and put your stuff in there. Um, before I demonstrate that though, actually what I wanted to demonstrate was some of the different uses that we can do with it. Quite often, I mean, everyone thinks about PowerPoint presentations. I stand up in front of a crowd and and, uh, and give a show, but slides can be do can do more than just presentations. And one example I want to show you is what uh, I talked about with the theater production people. So they have. As I'm going to open that up. Okay, and I'm assuming assuming you can see my screen here. So when they're building their sets when they're building their their costumes and doing sketches and stuff quite often what ends up happening is the director may be in a location else elsewhere um, sometimes they're in, even in New York doing working on another show so while they're doing that show these guys are starting to put together all the, the information what they used to do is take the sketches and they would take photos of the set and the as they were building it and put it in a folder and then send it to the the director the director would then go and look at the files, come open up the email client, send a note back saying, yeah, I think this needs to be like this, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of the work ended up getting done inside the email. Instead, what I proposed is you could actually use Google Slides for this. With Google Slides, one of the nice things about it, I'll just see if I open this up, make this a little bigger. No, that's not going to work. So let's just unzoom that. Or maybe not. It won't let me unzoom. Uh, there we go. So what's happened here is here's an example where I've gone in, I've put in a sketch of what the drawing is going to look like. I've put in some notes off to the side here about what we're going to make the materials off. And I share this slide with the, the director. So the director has all this information about the presentation of how it's going to look as well as any notes that I may want to add. In the second slide, I'm doing the same thing, but I don't know if you can see, but off to the side here, there's a bunch of comments here. Now the comments are, again, all stick with the, the document itself. There's no emailing of a document back and forth. We're all working with the same document. And you can see here, oops, let's go back here. You can see here where Jazz, which is uh, my director or one of the people working on it, says, the director says, let's use neon lights similar to flickering candles. How about a big a big battery or how big of a battery will she carry to power the stuff Then I would respond back they would make a re response saying okay please we proceed and I could resolve this issue because now I've addressed everything the notes have been made I've taken their notes and I'm gonna move forward with the with the production of these these costumes so as I mentioned before presentations are more than just sorry slides are more than just presentations there's other uses that you can have for them Another good one is um, posters, student posters. If you need to do a peer review, 
instead of having the students actually build up these big posters and stuff, what they can do instead is go in and um, create a slide, which would be their poster, give access to the class to make comments. That way, not only are the students going to have to learn how to do you know, proper commenting because their name is going to be attached to every comment they, they put in, so we want to make sure that the comments are you know, uh, constructive, but again, they can also go and do this at any point in time. You don't have to put the posters up along the wall, have each student walk around with a piece of paper and write down comments and stuff like that. It can all be done inside Google Slides. John, do you have anything you want to add at this point? Um, I use it. Uh, I use the slides in my programming course because we have a mass course. We have all the different sections of labs and lectures in one course in Blackboard, and sometimes that can make it a bit confusing. If I put my slides in there as well, it can either confuse the other instructors or it can confuse the students. So what I do is I create a folder in my Black in my Google Drive and throw the slides in there and give my students access to that, and they really appreciate that. So it's just an informational thing, but it makes it very easy for me to share what I've, I've done in class. Very cool, very cool. Uh, I'm not sure, I don't, uh, Terry seems to have stepped out for a second. So what well, I'm, here, I'm here, I just I turned off my camera. Oh, okay, I wasn't sure, okay. You didn't, didn't see me uh, wiping my nose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Terry, how about how would you like to show us some examples of uh, what you guys are doing? Sure, sure, okay. Um, let me just go back here. Um, I'll kind of start with a few <clears throat> a few examples that um, teachers are using with their students, and then a few that we're using as a oh, one sec. Google, this is the one I want to share that screen. Okay, you should see my screen with everybody, right? Yep. Okay. Let's make that a bit bigger so it fits. All right, so uh, I guess this is a look at one, one of the great things about Google Slides and the Google ecosystem period is the ability to share. Now, what you'll see here, if I kept scrolling, the, I did a search in my Google Drive for uh, presentations, and I just pulled this little menu down here. Whoops, I clicked on the wrong one. Pulled this menu down and said, show me just presentations owned by anyone. So these ones I own or anyone owns. So. You know, when you have, you know, you're building your network in different ways as an instructor, as a teacher, as a, as a new student teacher. Uh, you get friends that are creating things. Uh, if other people share things with you or share things with a group that you belong to, they can show up in here. So I was telling uh, Trevor and John yesterday about how, you know, um, belonging to groups that start to share their resources on using Google and training with Google, all of a sudden you can start to, this This will continue scrolling forever. I can, not, not forever, but I mean, I haven't gotten to the bottom of it yet because people keep, uh, Keep adding, adding content here. Some of these are mine. Some are, some are other people's. And you can also search just by your own. So I'm going to show you a few examples of ones that people have shared with me. This is a elementary student, elementary teacher, grade three, and this is an assignment on Inuit culture that she gives her students. You can think in the past it might have been an assignment that they would do in a poster, or a, uh, they might do a little, maybe they, you know, do a PowerPoint on it or write something up on Word. But uh, this is an example where a group. Would uh, I know you can't see these along the side, but these different slides along the side are just different kind of topics that the students are supposed to uh, find information on. So they'll go through and fill that out. She has a kind of a uh, sort of like not a rubric, but a, you know, to let them know if they're on track or what they need to do. And before they're ready to share, they have to have two or more ideas for each section, etc. So the student, they, she would share this template with the students. The students in their group would share with the other people in their group by typing their names in. And go from there, uh, and then they start to build it uh, that way. So what a finished one of those looks like is this. So she just shared this with me as a viewer only. If I was an editor of it, or if I was a teacher, I'd be able to go go to this. Uh, there's a section here called See Revision History. It's kind of grayed out right here, but I could see the revision history and see which students added which content on which slides, which is really handy for 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 marking. Um, so you can see there, different students have built different pieces here, adding in, adding in pictures. And uh, the one thing I love about the about slides is um, let me just quickly create another one here. I'll duplicate that one. Oh, I can't because it's read only. Uh, the one thing I love about slides is the research tool. So the students would be able to use the research tool in here to actually just bring in their pictures without ever leaving this screen and. Um, 
you probably went over that in, in, a, in a previous one, but that's one of my favorite features inside here. Here's another example. This is, uh, you know, getting students, if they're not used to uh, Google Apps and the collaborative nature of it, here's a really easy one to start with, with your class, whether your class is, uh, you know, university students or high school students or elementary students. It's a quick activity, who's in my class. Um, I, I changed the pictures. There was about 50 slides or 40 slides on here, but I took the pictures out, of course, so they're just, these are just stock images of kids. Um, but it's their actual description. So you can see here that uh, each kid claims a slide, puts their name on it, and can put information about them. So that, and then the, the teacher made one as well. And this is actually Karen. This is Karen's uh, class and her idea with this. So they all get to know each other a little bit and uh, kind of builds a bit of community within the class. Again, um, the way Google Docs works is even though you know it's uh, it's on the cloud, you're sharing it with only those people. Um, you can be very specific about who it's shared with. So it could be shared with the world, yes, but it's this particular idea on this particular slide deck would just be shared with the people in the class. Uh, here's the example of the uh, if I insert uh, or sorry put a new slide in. Um, here's an example of how the um, research tool works. So the research tool over here, if you haven't seen it, it's under Tools and Research. You turn it on over here. And um, I did a search for teenagers, but if I look for Edmonton, the cool thing is that you can insert a map of Edmonton right from there. You can insert a picture from Edmonton right from there without having to go to a different, uh, you know, without having to go and copy and paste the URL or whatever else. And inside of slides, oops, inside of slides, it also has the option to insert videos. So it'll find videos of Edmonton. And uh, again, you can preview those here and then insert those by dragging and dropping them as well. So anyway, how did I mention that? Because that's one of my favorite tools. And I know some people still use slides and haven't quite, haven't, uh, haven't, aren't aware of that feature. And it's there in Docs as well, which is really cool. You probably went over that on the Docs day. Sorry, yeah, Terry, I just wanted to ask a question. So. Yeah. Because um, I actually had never seen the video component before. When I do the research, I usually do the graphics. But the videos is the video available on the Google Docs side of things? No, the only place for video is in presentations, and it's right. only YouTube video. So it's unfortunate. We've been asking them for a while. Like one of the requests we've made is that, you know, when I'm going into uh, uh, this is what I can actually insert in. Well, when I'm, when I'm putting it in, if I could actually insert video from my Google Drive as well, so that I wouldn't have to have the video on YouTube. So that hopefully that feature is coming at some point. But uh, yeah, it's only in presentations. Okay. There's another example. This one is a grade 10 science class. And uh, again, the students were using microscopes, and they were just pointing a regular digital camera down the scope of a microscope and taking pictures of it. Then they would take those digital pictures and um, uh, use a Pixlr photo editing program, like a web-based photo editing program, and actually put the the demarcations on there. I think the arrow itself is a. Some of these pieces are pins that they actually put into the microscope, but you can see um, here are the different uh, slides. A few of these are videos, but the point here is that each student is actually. This isn't one person making up this entire slide deck. It's the students actually building it, uh, and then other students. You know, when it comes time to do any kind of assessment, other students would have access to the whole thing. Uh, and watch it from here. Here's an example. Oh, here's a video. So they've actually uploaded this one. I'm not sure again if this one is 9A. Oh yeah, it would look like it would be one they actually shot through the through the that they actually recorded themselves. I'm just looking at the the name of it here. So uh, John, the teacher that was doing this, John Chase, is now retired, but he he had done a lot of, has done a lot of really innovative things with his students and very simple technology. Again, this is a regular microscope, regular old digital camera. I know you can do some of this stuff with uh, an attachment on an iPhone or Android phone now, but um, you know, very interesting. And they were just using uh, the notes function in YouTube. So the students were using the notes and text tagging functions in YouTube to put those little comments on there. So that was pretty cool. Um, so here's another one, another example again of this is a, a demonstration. Those first three were examples of uh, ones that were made in uh, elementary and high school. This one is an example of a collaborative presentation made by a bunch of people uh, like you know Trevor, John, and myself who get together and want to pull together tech tips or whatever to share with people. And also the, the slam idea with Google is kind of a challenge to see who can come up with kind of a, something no one else has seen before. So people to get together, each one makes one or two slides to put it together and um, list those on here. And we all kind of build it together. So this is a, a, a group of people that makes that. So that's a you know very simple. 
Um, some people do think that Google Slides are simple and uh, you know, don't have a lot of formatting to them, but it's, it's, uh, I'll show you a couple in a second that, that, um, that, that will show you that they actually do quite a bit of formatting. This one is one that uh, came from, again, from a, a template that someone else has made. It was actually made by a teacher who built a, <coughs> I'll just present it here on this screen. You should see the whole thing. Trevor, do you see my whole screen? Hang on Sorry, I forgot to mute, unmute. Uh, are we supposed to see the full screen or just the presentation? Oh, were you seeing the whole ABCD thing? I was going to kind of... Yeah, we did. Oh, okay. I'll do that again. I'll share it out to make sure. This one here. Okay. So it was made by a teacher who actually had... Um, I'll just present... I don't want to present in full screen, but... Okay, so just confirming you see the whole screen here? I, I see the whole presentation. Okay, good. With the school bus down in the corner? Yep. Okay, so what this is, it's a presentation, and a teacher had made it basically with, with just the little YouTube video in the side. So basically it had... Uh, this workshop is you. Mr. You know, it's a little by the letter R. There we go. So they had the video just in the middle of the screen, but we used this instead. We took the same presentation, made a copy of it. Now this is an A to Z look at different things you can do in Google. So when we go to... Uh, Oops, I'm slipping through those, but when I go to undo send or the Google URL shortener, it's just, uh, that's for you. You know, it'll take me into that different link and, and link up to that. Uh, um, yeah, so I'll just close this out. That's, that's very cool. Would you be willing to share that? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. This is uh, this one here at the beginning as well. So what you can do is uh, hyperlink different pieces. So it doesn't have to just like in PowerPoint, it doesn't have to go from slide one to two to three to four, etc. Um, and if you're watching, um, if you're just viewing this video, you can actually get this presentation by going to that short link on this this slide right here. That's a I, a capital I there, and it is case sensitive. Um, but the cool thing about this is that you can actually set hyperlinks. So I could set the D to link to if I uh, it's right now it's linking to slide six, but I could change that and I could actually have D link to something else, like actually I link to a, uh, uh, a website or whatever, right? If I click on this and say link, I want the L to link to instead of slide 14, I say let's actually link to, you know, something, you know, a, a website I want it to go to, right? And uh, I actually want that to link to slides, I think it was 13, am I right? 13. Slide 13, no, it's 14, sorry, one sec. Slide 14. So you can use it sort of like a, 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 a choose your own adventure, that kind, of, that kind of thing. And this one, the bus actually always links back to the home page. So that's a real simple example of that kind of a thing. And um, another more complex example, a little more you know, cool design, is this is a template that was made by someone. Now, if I look, if I broke down this presentation, it would actually just be an image in the background that's set on the background of the slide, right? This is a, just an image that's back there. On top of it are a few different objects, and you can insert any kind of objects into a slide on top, and you order them like on different layers. So this is just an arrow with some text in it. That's what all these things are. And you can see, and if you look, but they each link to something else. It links to a different slide. So you're kind of making a little, your own um, basic version of sort of a, you know, a role player kind of uh, virtual uh, tour. Yeah, a virtual tour. That's a uh, virtual museum. And then as you walk through it, you can see that uh, there's David Lee, and then different pieces he's actually built together with the photos, a place where people could actually put things. So, you, you know, with your students, you could make this, make use of this for anything. And there's lots of these examples out on the web. And this is one that just uh, that came across that that was a really, really cool design. And uh, again, you can share it. We take things that we make, we share it back with um, the community. Um, if we make something that, uh, you know, it's, it's gone, the days have passed where, you know, we would make a bunch of content and then to public and just kind of keep it, keep it for ourselves and, you know, use it in your own little domain. I know it's a bit different when you talk about, start talking about uh, intellectual copyright at, at the university level, whether it's you know, with research, that kind of thing. But for this type of stuff, um, there's a really great community of, of sharing around it. So that's kind of all I had to, the, the ones for now I have, have to share, but uh, yeah. And and just to follow up on what uh, Terry was showing, I mean, there are lots and lots of uh, resources and different slides out there. The you know the turn by turn stuff. There's like 
hundreds and hundreds of different uh, templates that you can make use to do your own turn by turn uh, adventures and stuff you know John's John's people who are basically our teachers of the future that's those are great things to build for their students as they work with them um, I've also seen people use it as a quiz um, Q and a quiz and answers so there's three questions you select click on one uh, answer if it's a wrong answer it takes you to the wrong answer page that basically says no this is wrong try again uh, and then until they get the right one then it gives you know this is the correct answer so for a lot of people I mean there, there's a bit of work that can be involved in that but I mean there's some really great resources for people who have different ways of, of learning because not everyone is is strictly a piece of paper learner some people like to learn through visual uh, especially if you're doing things like you know um, art history or whatever it's it's when you have images and stuff that you want to make use of the the slides uh, is good for that there was a really uh, important piece of uh, the documentation that uh, the guys were talking about is is all about the fact that you can have more than one person uh, collaborate and as I mentioned before it's all on one file and one of the great advantages of it is that I can be presenting and while I'm presenting someone can be actually be updating the document that I'm working on so for example I'm going to share a document here John do you have access to that document that we were talking about I do okay so I'm just gonna pin myself here so this is a Google slide so let's assume that I am and I've, I've had this happen I am I've gone somewhere I'm going to go give a, a talk and then I realized at the last minute, you know what, I really need another slide after the, uh, this piece here. I need another slide to talk about uh, something else. So normally what would happen is I would have to email back, say, hey, can you grab the pictures of whatever, upload them into the presentation, email me the latest presentation, and then I have to wait and can't start my presentation until I get that email in. So, no, not yet, John, not yet. So what I'm going to show you, though, is... I'm going to present this, this, um, this, do the presentation here. So let me just switch to my presentation window. And we're going to pretend that I am in front of a crowd of people and I'm going to be talking. So here's my presentation. So I'm going to start my presentation. Go ahead, John, you can make your changes. So while I'm doing my presentation, I give my talk there. I'm going to be talking about this. I go to my next, my next uh, window. And of course, I'm going to talk about who let the dogs out. And normally, this is where you saw before the presentation was over. All I have to do is refresh that window. So I'm still up in front of a like hundred people or whatever. And I'm just going to refresh the window real quick. It'll just, of course, refresh this screen that we just talked about. But when I move to the next slide, there it is, all that updated information. So that your, your actual slide can be updated while you are actually presenting. And to me, that is such a great value because so often I've heard stories of people who are, um, you know, they've built a slide for someone who's gone off, done their presentation, and always like 20 minutes, 30 minutes before presentation time, they get this urgent phone call saying, please update and send. Here, because we're re using the one slide, you don't even have to do that. You just update it, and it's updated because we're all using the same slide. How cool is that? That was a cool function when I figured that one out. Yeah, yeah, I remember using that in a, a university class when we were trying to add uh, add something on the end, so just like that. Someone was presenting, and we were we were uh, making some edits to the end because you know someone had forgot something. Oh, yeah, sit at the back of the class and add it to the live presentation, just like that. So that's a great feature. Um. That's pretty much all we've got that we're going to talk about today. We just wanted to introduce some of these concepts. And again, you know, Google Slides has some great advantages. And it's not just about presentation. There's so much else that you can do for it. And I mean, even if you just Google, Google, do a Google search on Google Slides ideas or, you know, alternative ideas or something like that, you'll get all sorts of stuff. If you want more information about uh, what we do here, uh, you can go to the website, mcewen.ca slash Google. We've got information there. I talked a bit yesterday about uh, some of the resources there, as well as tutorials. Uh, Lynda.com has a great tutorial on making use of Google Apps, so you can access that uh, and go through all that information. Our site there, mcewen.ca slash Google, has information. There's a link there to tutorials, and there's also a link there called uh, Tips for Google Apps, which is a more some more advanced stuff that uh, I put in there in a blog kind of form. So there's some really cool ideas that we talk about there as well.
And if you want, of course, give me uh, you can give me a call here at the, the office or email me at beckt at mcewen.ca. Guys, where can uh, people uh, get a hold of you if they have any questions they'd like to uh, talk to you about? Uh, for me, it, uh, if faculty are interested in kind of what's happening in Edmonton Public and uh, some of the different uh, initiatives that are going on, what teachers are doing, we, we put a post of that, a lot of that on uh, our website, which is tips.epsb.ca, so T-I-B-P-S, tips team, uh, tips.epsb.ca. Um, yeah, that's good. Get a hold of us from there, too. And I'm over in the computer science department at McEwen, so you can find me in the, the staff directory, and my email is colsonj6 at mcewen.ca. Excellent. Thanks very much for joining me, guys. Hopefully, we'll be doing more of these sessions uh, in the future, but I just wanted to see at this point, uh, you know, give you everyone an idea of what's available, what we can do with Google, and keep an eye out on uh, McEwen Midweek for some more information. Thanks very much, guys. <laughs>